word of inspiration. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Haitian American Caucus Words of Inspiration Sunday. I'm your host, Peggy Denson, and I'm also the Director of Business Development here at Hack. Let me tell you something, guys. We have such an amazing service for you today so i really want you to take your time out and just get yourself focused and enjoy the program but before we begin i would love to share the mission statement here at hack and it goes as follows the haitian american caucus is a global community development non-for-profit organization whose mission is to provide haitian communities around the world with access to information and resources that will foster self-development and success. Also, if you didn't know, the Haitian American Caucus Haiti advances opportunity and improves the quality of life for the people living in Haiti and all its descendants. Hack Haiti promotes sustainability development in Haiti that eliminates extreme poverty by providing opportunities for education, health, and economic and self-sufficiency. And I know that was a mouthful, but I just thought that it was just so important that you know what's going on here at Hack and our mission and our vision. And we want to make sure that you partner up with us. And I know you're probably wondering, well, how can I partner up with it, with us? Well, just go to www.hackglobal.org and you will find all the information you need. I look forward to partnering up with you on this mission. Now, without further ado, I want you to just make sure that you are just relaxing and getting ready to be inspired. We have this amazing duo um, of, 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 of this couple singing this amazing song. So without further ado, I would like to present to you our artists, Selwyn and Michelle, singing a beautiful song. Trusting you is so hard Putting faith in what I just can't see Trusting you deliver Promises so big and wild for me Did you mean it? When said that you would never leave I'm believing believing that you'll come through for me Ooh, oh, I... lead us to a place measured by your grace Knowing that your promises are yes and amen. There's no need for haste, trusting in your pace. Goodness and your mercy will follow, follow. Hey. Trusting in your voice, Lord. Silencing the others that try to speak Listening in the stillness Waiting for the answers that I seek It is me Just in the 
praise God. That was such a beautiful duo, definitely. I don't know about you, but I was truly blessed by them too. And we look forward to hearing more music out of them. Okay, without further ado, it is a privilege and an honor to introduce the next person that we'll be presenting to you. Now, you probably think I'm playing favorites, but I'm not. But this dynamic man also happens to be none other than my husband, Pastor Rashidi Denson from Feed the Fire Global Ministry. And he will be presenting a powerful word from the word of God. So I want you to make sure that you grab your pen and paper, get ready to take notes. I present to some, introduce to others, no other than Pastor Rashidi Denson. Good morning. My name is Pastor Rashidi Denson of Feed the Fire Global Ministries, and I'm so excited about being on this platform with Hack. I just want to thank the Haitian American Caucus for allowing me this opportunity to be able to share a word with you this Sunday morning. I am so excited about what the Lord has put in my spirit to share with you today. So I would encourage you, go get your writing tools, get your pad and write this down. So today's message that God has just been tolling in my spirit, and I just want to share with you today, the title of the message is called Collateral Beauty collateral beauty. So if you have your words, I'm going to be reading out the King James version of the Bible. You can grab 2 Samuel chapter 9 and I'm going to read verse 7 and 13. I'm also going to be reading a supporting text which is Matthew chapter 20 verse 16. I will probably repeat that again. So once again, I'm reading 2 Samuel chapter 9 verse 7 and verse 13 out of the King James Version. And it reads like this, don't be afraid. David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will always eat at my table. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table and was lame on both his feet. The supporting text, Matthew chapter 20, verse 16 says this. So the last will be first and the first will be last. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, we just thank you right now. Father, we ask, Father, we submit our will. We submit our hearts. We submit all of us to you, Father. We ask that you take control, that, Father, you will flow and you will bring a word and season to your people who are listening right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Once again, I'm so excited about being in front of you. And I just want to give you that title again. The title today is called Collateral Beauty. So let's talk about this a little bit. So when we're talking about King David, for instance, you want to kind of understand the brief history of his life. And so you have to understand that David was coined as a misfit or not so much even a misfit, but someone who was forgotten about. Let me rephrase that. David was somebody who was forgotten about. So if you go into 1 Samuel 16, 7, the scripture says, but the Lord said to Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. You have to understand something about David that when the prophet went down to when God told the prophet to go down to Jesse's house, which was David's father. At the time, David was a teenager and the, and the prophet was instructed by God because God had got to a point where Saul, King Saul at the time had disobeyed God. And this was about the third time that King Saul had disobeyed God. And God said it displeased them that he even made Saul king. Right. And so at this point, the prophet was told to go down and anoint a new person king over Israel. And so when the prophet went down there, God told him as he got into a conversation with David's father, what ended up happening was the prophet and David's father tried to determine who God was going to anoint. 
And God said, do not look on his countenance. Do not look on his height. So I want you to understand that what man sees, what, 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 what people see about you, God sees something different. When people look at you, they look at your inconsistencies and they look at maybe your past or moments where you wasn't at your best. But when God looks at you, he looks at the finished product. And so although David was not walking in the authority of a king yet, God had anointed him in his position as someone who was forgotten about. I just wanted to pause for a second and tell you that God still blesses those who are forgotten about. Even though you may be forgotten about by those who may be close to you, God has not forgotten about you. Yo, you should give God some praise on that note right there. And so I want you to understand that God said it displeased him that he even made Saul king. And so you have to understand that it, the, the, the moment was set up by God. So David got anointed by God, but he didn't assume the position of king yet. And so there was a series of things over his life. If you know anything about David, most people talk about David when he defeated Goliath. And what ended up happening when David defeated Goliath what ended up happening was King Saul became very jealous of him. He did not like him. He became very uncomfortable with David's presence. And what you have to understand that sometime God will send the anointed to serve the appointed for a certain period of time because God is training the anointed for the next level of their life. Follow me now. And so what ended up happening was as David was 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 now allowed to go into King Saul's house and he was able to serve the king but not only was he serving the king he was being prepped to be the king and so it wasn't just like that in the open but King Saul didn't know he sensed something about David he sensed that there was a difference about David but he couldn't pinpoint it on what it was but he was threatened by David I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you've been some people have saw you as a threat they saw you as a threat to their position. They saw you as a threat to their shine. And so what you have to understand is that David did not raise his hand for the anointing. David was chosen by God right? And so as the story unfolds and you got a little history of David and you understand that David was a man who was forgotten about, God didn't forget about him. So fast forward to the text that we're in right now. You notice that David is interacting with a gentleman by the name of Mephibosheth. But before we go there, I need to help you understand what collateral damage is versus collateral beauty. We're talking about, don't forget, collateral beauty. So what is collateral damage? Collateral damage is an unintentional or accidental damage to people or things that happens as a result of an action or event. They were damages that happened due to the action of a person or event but were not meant to happen. That means that they were damages. Collateral damage is something that happens that wasn't meant to happen. So somebody made a mistake and unfortunately, unfortunately, damage happened. And so when you look at this whole picture here, you're talking about Mephibosheth. Who is Mephibosheth? Mephibosheth is the son of Jonathan, which is the grandson of King Saul. Follow me now. And so the grandson of King Saul and the son and the father of Mephibosheth, which name is Jonathan, him and David had created a great bond together. They had created a great friendship and Jonathan loved David. And what happened was, before Jonathan had passed away and his father, King Saul, passed away, Jonathan and David had made a covenant. And that covenant required David to not forget Jonathan's family, do not forget his offspring. And so as the scripture unfolds, what ended up happening was there was a particular time where Saul and Jonathan, right? There was a time where the kingdom, they was in battle. And what ended up happening was that 
What ended up happening was that Jonathan's son was being taken care of by his handmaiden, Mephibosheth is who I'm talking about. And so what ended up happening was when Saul and Jonathan was killed, David assumed the throne of Jonathan. That's when he took the throne. And so what ended up happening was the handmaiden, the person who was taking care of Mephibosheth, actually dropped him by accident. And when they dropped him by accident, she dropped him. He ended up becoming paralyzed. He, she ended up breaking his legs. That was an accident. She didn't intentionally do that, but she dropped the baby. And un unfortunately, he suffered damage to his legs. But because the kingdom was at hand and King Saul had now passed away and his son, Jonathan, what ended up happening back in those days, if you go and you play the game of chess, you will realize that although the queen is the strongest piece on the board, the king is the most important piece. Why? Because the king on the chessboard, if you capture the king, then what happens is the whole kingdom goes under siege. And so when King Saul died and his son Jonathan died, David assumed the position. And because he assumed the position, all the people started to scatter and run and they got scared because usually when a new king came into play, he took over. He got rid of the old regime. He got rid of them. And so as a result, Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth, who broke his legs and became paralyzed, was put in a place called Lodabar. And Lodabar was the place that means the word, a place of no pasture and no word. He was put in a place, right, where most people don't go. They, th those people are counted out. Those people are forgotten about. Those people are overlooked. And nobody cares about what goes on with those people. But I showed up today to tell you that God has a plan for those who was cast into Lodabar. God has a plan for you. God knows where you're at. God knows what they said about you. God knows that they overlooked you. God knows that they labeled you as a misfit. And as a result, God said that I made a covenant to come back and restore you. I made a covenant to bring you back. And I didn't forget about it. So in this particular text now, what you have to find out is that now that you understand what collateral damage is, you got to understand what collateral beauty is. And let me tell you about the collateral beauty. The collateral beauty is this beauty um, that seems impossible to be seen, but it can turn to the best thing of your life. Nobody can see anything great coming out of David. Even his father overlooked him. Even his father forgot about him. He left him up in the fields. And when him and the prophet was talking about who God was going to anoint, they never thought about him. But at the end, they realized that when God turned around and God said it was none of the other brothers, he said, I must, you must have a another son. And he said, oh, I remembered he'd be up in the fields. So I want you to understand is that David, a man who was forgotten about, actually connected to Jonathan, who was overlooked. And guess what? Out of that covenant, out of that friendship, Jonathan told David, he said, I've been overlooked by my father and you've been um, forgotten about by your father, but make sure that my offspring never falls in the category of either one. Make sure that the people, the children that come out of my lineage will never be a misfit and never be forgotten about and never be overlooked. And guess what? Collateral beauty is being able to see the impossible and what you couldn't see. Being able to see the things uh, that look bad, but God said what the enemy meant for evil, he will turn it around to be good. So I just showed up today to tell you that in the collateral beauty, don't forget to, that even though there's collateral damage, that God is still working it out for your good. But let me tell you how he worked it out. Let me tell you how he worked it out. What God did was David in the text that I gave, in the main text, David went and searched for Mephibosheth. He went and found an offspring of Jonathan. 
And that was Mephibosheth down in Lodabar. And he said, bring him to my house. And when he got him there, John, you know, Mephibosheth was a little scared because, you, you know, you, the king always got rid of the last regime. The king always got rid of the last regime. He didn't keep him. And so I want you to understand this. When they brought Mephibosheth to King David, King David reminded him, I'm not here to hurt you. I don't want to bother you. I don't want to bring destruction to you. What I did was I searched you out because there was a covenant made. And I wanted to honor the covenant that I made with your father. And I wanted to make you let you understand that although you've been cast into Lodabar, today I will restore you to the king's table. Today I will bring you back into your rightful place. So I showed up today to tell somebody that God has a seat at the table for you. You may not have gotten an invitation to the seat and that the world has set for you. You may not have got the invitation at your job for that promotion. You may not have got the invitation in your family, right? You may not have got the invitation in your community, but God showed up to tell you that I have a seat at my table for you. And when I put you at my table, I'm gonna make sure that not only you get to eat well, that you get to live well, that you get to stay at the seat because nobody can sit in your seat at my table that I made for you but you. The seat that I put at my table for you was only made for you. And I showed up today to tell you that the collateral beauty is this, is that God is going down into your load of all and God is bringing you back to the king's table. And he said, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So I want to talk to somebody right now. I want to know if you've been on the back of the line. I want to know if you was forgotten about. And God said today, he said, I'm showing up and I'm going to show out. He said, all you got to do is respond to the invitation. All you got to do is show up to the table. He says, I sent you an invite. He says, respond to the invite, show up to the table, sit down and eat continually. He said, don't worry about who questions your seat at the table. He says, don't try to explain to them. And if somebody says, how you got here? He says, look at them and say, God told me I could sit here. The Lord said, I'm the head and not the tail. The Lord said, I'm up and not beneath. The Lord said, I'm blessed going in and blessed coming out. And I just showed up here today to let you know that Jeremiah 1, 5 and 9 says, he says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And he said, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. He said, lead them, lead them, lead them. So guess what? You didn't think you had it. You thought that all the damages, the collateral damages had consumed who you was. You thought it stopped God's plan on your life. You thought it made God say, I'm snatching my purpose back. But God said, I know what you've been through. God says, I know where your feet went. I know what you spoke out your mouth. And he said, guess what? I'm letting you know that I have not forgotten about you. He said, I'm letting you know that I will not overlook you. And he says, guess what? From this day forward, I'm going to show you, pick your head up, pick your head up high. I know everything is not going the way you want it to go, but he said, pick your head up high and know that I think the best of you. God bless you. I love you. We appreciate you. And I ask you bow your heads right now as we pray. Lord, you touch your people right now. Father, you know if they're in Lodabar in their heart. You know, Father, if they are perplexed in what you've called them to do. You know, Father, that there's words that have held them back. You know that there's been damages in their life. You know, Father, that there's things, Father, that has caused their feet to become stagnated. But, Father, remind them that you have an invitation at the seat. 
You have an invitation at your table that you have not forgotten about them. And Father, this is the hour where you're saying, I'm loosing you. I'm loosing the heaviness. I'm loosing the yoke off your neck. I'm making sure that you are now restored back to the king's table. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, family. Hallelujah and God bless. That was such a powerful word, collateral beauty. We thank God for Pastor Rashidi Denson and the word that has gone forth. I pray that this word will bless your heart. And I just want to share before I let you go that Haitian American Caucus is doing some amazing things and we want you to be a part of it. You're probably wondering if you haven't before, please do now. Visit us at www.hatglobal.org and be a part of this awesome organization. I look forward to seeing you again. I'm your host, Peggy Denson, and I hope you've enjoyed Words of Inspiration. God bless and take care. Next Sunday. Every life has worth beyond measure. Within each person is a flood of potential. Waiting to be unleashed. What if every child, every woman, and every man was able to imagine something new? Full of hope. New dreams and the ability to choose their own future. A new way of seeing the world. The community. Themselves. Pushing past the obstacles that owns the world. And when the world yells, you cannot. We will keep whispering, yes, you can. Together we can make a difference. Together we are stronger. Able to move mountains and break the chains of poverty. American cookies, strengthening Haiti through education, health, feeding programs, micro enterprise. We, we are, are Haiti. Haiti. We are HAC.